Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Downey, and today we are going to talk about high hemoglobin levels and hematocrit. Essentially, this video will focus on polycythemia, secondary to testosterone, or just androgens in general. Uh, polycythemia being uh, defined by having a hematocrit more than 50%, or in some cases, some define it as having a hematocrit of more than 55%. I have made a video on this in the past, however I didn't give enough attention to therapeutic options in the cases of polycythemia. I focused more on a study where I just wanted to go over research around ACE inhibitors and their role in treating polycythemia. In this video I'm going to be more focused on testosterone and steroid related polycythemia and what you can do about it. Um, just as a heads up, the treatment of it is quite is going to be quite disheartening for most steroid users or individuals on TRT. However, I will just state them as they pop up. Um, so let's just look at polycythemia, its incidence, its risk factors. So in individuals using testosterone, around 22% will develop polycythemia. When starting TRT or any androgen, it's actually recommended that for the first year or so, you should check your hemoglobin levels every three months, and then followed by that every two or twice a year. And the reason for this is that in uh, not all cases of polycythemia develop within the first year, the majority of them will develop by the third year. And so what is the issue with polycythemia? Well, it can predispose you to a variety of conditions, which range from hypertension, which leads to cardiomegaly, pulmonary hypertension, transic ischemic attacks of the brain, or TIAs, as well as thromboembolic conditions like clots in the legs, or DBTs. However, hospitalizations from having or, or from polycythemia secondary to testosterone treatment tends to occur at a rate of 0.9% of all patients, which is actually quite significant. As many people know, testosterone tends to upregulate erythropoietin, although this pathway still isn't yet confirmed. There is still debate as to how androgens cause erythropoiesis, and it is thought that um, dihydrotestosterone or DHT might be the biggest risk factor for that, um, but it's also suggested that testosterone lowers hepcidin levels. Another big risk factor for the development of polycythemia is intramuscular injections as opposed to transdermal or uh, topical testosterone. Furthermore, Testosterone will exacerbate any underlying risk factors you have for the development of polycythemia. So if you are going to use testosterone or androgens in general, you should ensure you are not obese and not smoking and that you do not have obstructive sleep apnea, as these are the biggest contributors to polycythemia or secondary polycythemia. In individuals taking TRT, polycythemia is more likely to occur in those younger than the age of 40. 77% of all patients or all cases of polycythemia are in individuals younger than 40 in those taking TRT. Furthermore, those who have a BMI of more than 30 are at the highest risk of developing polycythemia. And another major risk factor is smoking or nicotine dependence. Another risk factor for the development of polycythemia are your testosterone levels. The higher your testosterone levels, the more likely you are to develop polycythemia. And the issue with TRT is that it worsens obstructive sleep apnea, which then in turn worsens polycythemia, as well as testosterone itself causes polycythemia. So ensuring you do not have obstructive sleep apnea prior to starting androgens is probably favorable. Just of interest in one study, it was found that intramuscular injections of testosterone had a lower incidence of polycythemia than those using subcutaneous injections. 
So understanding the risk factors is quite important as if you modify those risk factors that cause polycythemia when starting testosterone or androgens in general, you can try to optimize yourself and ensure that you do not get polycythemia by reducing other risk factors. So moving on to treatment. Now treatment isn't very well established and is still kind of guided by expert opinion. But in a study in 2018, they actually found that blood donating or venesection does not work very well or is not very effective for polycythemia secondary to testosterone use. They stated that there is a misperception by patients and healthcare providers that tea, uh, that uh, blood donation or regular bloodletting can reduce the risk of TRT polycythemia and that this isn't grounded in much science and their paper tends to support the fact that even whilst bloodletting may decrease your levels temporarily, they don't decrease your overall risk of adverse effects or events from having polycythemia. So that is one of the most recent papers and is quite important to note because essentially it means that if you do have polycythemia secondary to TRT, whilst you will lower your hematocrit and hemoglobin after venesection, it doesn't tend to decrease your overall risk of adverse effects that you would get from having raised hematocrit and doing nothing about it, so it kind of questions the point of even doing venesection or bloodletting. However, currently in America it's recommended that if your hematocrit reaches a level of above 54% and you are on androgens that you should stop them completely, whereas European guidelines take the approach of using venesection or phlebotomy to treat these higher levels. In my opinion, the American guideline seems to be a bit more suitable and a bit more health conscious than that of the European guidelines. And what they suggest is once you stop the androgen and you've done a workup for every, uh, every other possible cause of polycythemia and you've excluded any other possible cause and your hematocrit is less than, less than 50, you can retry starting TRT, but at a lower dose. However, they also did mention that if you do have symptoms of hyperviscosity, so thick blood, that phlebotomy is recommended. Another recommendation is that if you were using intramuscular testosterone before, that you convert to transdermal testosterone. So what can we take away from these guidelines? Well, it seems that it's not as simple as many people say it is. You can't just bloodlet and assume that that is going to solve the issues. The most reasonable approach would be stopping the offending agent, so the TRT or androgen, ruling out any under, other underlying cause, and then doing a re, or retrying therapy again once your levels are appropriate. This approach is probably the safest, safest approach as we have evidence now to suggest that venesection or phlebotomy, while still on TRT, does not seem to reduce the absolute risk of having high hematocrit and that it doesn't do much over the long term either than make your blood look good on paper. However, the problem is that this, the quality of research at this point in time is not very high in quality and there's still a lot more to be found out about having polycythemia when using androgens. And again, since there is a lack of research, a lot of individuals have their own recommendations of what to do when experiencing polycythemia on testosterone. And my suggestion is to use the most evidence-based approach. Mine isn't the strongest, however, it's rooted in the strongest evidence we have so far, and obviously my opinion will change when newer research comes out. Let me know what you think about this video, what you would do in these situations, and I will see you in the next video.